Fontana. It was right before Easter week. And because it is a translation, the uh, flow of the speaking and the words, and it might be a little choppy or, or a little funny, but it's because I'm listening to myself on another tape and making an English translation. So if you'll bear with me, the principles are clear, and the Word of God is always beautiful. Lord bless you. For the ones that are coming in a little late, Brother Arnoldo is in, our, in El Paso preaching to some groups out there. So maybe we'll have some new brethren in the, in the way. And this time you didn't get me off guard. I brought you a lot of handout sheets this time. Real neat handout sheets. Glory to God. And one of the principles of God, one of the basic principles of God, uh, I want to mention right now, for you people that are new with us, uh, maybe you... You haven't noticed, but we have a message that is very wide, very deep, and there's a lot of new things. There's a lot of uh, new, there's a lot of Bible verses we use. And one of the things that you need to do is to bring paper and uh, pa paper and pencil so that you can uh, write down the different things that you'll be studying because when you get home, you're not going to remember a lot of the things. But if it's written down, you'll be able to go back and study when you get home. One of the Bible verses is in the book of Revelation. Revelation chapter 1, Jesus is talking to John, and there's other Bible verses in other places, but here it's, uh, Jesus says, verse 19, write the things which thou hast seen and the things which are, and the things which shall be hereafter. God, laid, uh, God told John to do what? To write. To, and writing notes is a sign of gratitude, and it's a way uh, that we can uh, treasure the Word of God. Some things that will be seen are, are for your life today. Some of the things that we're speaking now will be for your life from here uh, a month from now and you can say then uh, oh I remember something was said uh, a while back about that I'm going to pull out my notes and see if there's something there and the same thing for a year from now so if you have your notes then uh, you'll be able to review them through the week but you'll also be able to feed your souls later on and we're uh, we're coming into the uh, Holy Week Easter week and there's a lot of principles that are in uh, that we find in the Holy Week, in in the Easter, and in the Passover. The Holy Week is the Passover of the Old Testament. Let's go to Exodus chapter twelve. I want to explain a few things uh, first. I want to explain. Uh, something about uh, God's principles and it'll show you how God works with his people. There are certain principles. Uh, God doesn't do things just to see how things are going to fall together. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put a bunch of situations. Uh, God doesn't say I'm going to put a bunch of situations over somebody and see what they can do about it. God is a God of order. He has his laws, and he has his uh, rules. And when, when I speak of principles, I'm speaking of the way that God functions, uh, or the way that God uh, uh, demands that man uh, function, or these laws that have to do with his creation with himself. And uh, the Bible uh, mentions it as doctrine. Isn't, when I speak of doctrine, I'm not talking of doctrine of some church. I'm talking of the doctrine of the Bible, of the Lord. And one of these principles of the Lord has to do with the class tonight. 
and maybe Brother Arnoldo can continue teaching on this. It has to do with day and night. Has Brother Arnoldo taught you anything about day and night? Okay. We, we live in this world. And as far as uh, heaven is concerned, is, are we living in a daytime or in a nighttime? We're living in a nighttime, right? Let me make a circle here, and I'll put God up here. God is in heaven, and in heaven there's always light. It's always day. God himself is clothed in light. God is light. His, he has a, a spiritual creation, or the, the spiritual uh, beings around us are, are, are in light. And here on earth, we're in, we're in the midst of crime and war and problems and trials. So here, on, on the planet earth, we are living in a night time. And some of the hymns that we sing uh, have to do with when, when, we, when it, we go into the dawn of, of uh, the, the new life with God. And there's a, there's a thought in Christianity that uh, we are going, someday we'll go into the daily daylight on the other side and there's day and night day and night day and night but in reality our life as a whole is a night a night time my life my life is the same as a night time while I'm born and, and I grow up and I, I live on this earth till the time the Lord takes me I'm living in a night time when I leave this place, then I will go into the daytime. And the principles of God don't change. In the Word of God, there is a lot uh, about day and night. And if you all uh, pay attention to what I'm going to say tonight, you're going to find uh, that the Word of God is going to have a new life to it. Let's go to 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. And you need to memorize this because it's the base of, of a life uh, full of richness in the Lord Jesus Christ and, and the Word coming alive. Let's read it. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be perfect Thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So all scripture, all of the word of God is profitable. God isn't going to uh, waste his breath or uh, just have a lot of exercise writing a lot of the word. Jesus Christ him said that not even one little portion of the word of God was going to disappear. All of creation could go away, but his word was going to uh, remain. And the things that God says in His Word are very important. And after the class today uh, uh, on day and night and the other things that we're going to see, start looking at the, at the Bible verses uh, when something says something happened in the daytime or something happened at night. All Scripture is profitable. In another Bible verse, it might say something about uh, nighttime. Uh, start looking for the lesson that's in that. What is the le lesson there for our life today? Because there is a lesson in that for us. This is the way that the Word of God is going to, to start becoming alive. Now, the, the, the way of God, as far as we're concerned, if we're, if we're walking, um, let, me go, let me start again. A Christian, as a Christian walks in this life, his life is going to be this way, horizontal. And a, and a Christian that's growing is going to be upward. But we in this way are looking for a, a road that is advancing, that's progressing, that, that, where there's change. But this other road has lots of uh, hills and valleys. And the, the road that goes upward of a growing Christian also has hills and valleys, mountains and valleys. And God lets us go through times of, of pain and suffering and trials 
and he also gives his times of, of uh, uh, well-being, of prosperity, of, of good. These, these are the two roads, and we can see it this way also. I'm going to put it this way. God's way is divided into day and night. God's road is divided into day and night. Day is when there is light, when you can see everything clearly, when there's nothing hidden. Uh, when I said, oh, what are you looking for, Lord? We well, know. And everything's going fine. Uh, the blessings of God are flowing. Uh, the car's okay. The kids are happy. Uh, there's no debts to be paid. and uh, There's no problems. Everything is fine. All of us know that there's also times on the other side of the coin when it's nighttime, when there are trials, there are pains, when all of the kids, boom, 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 one right after the other. The money is gone. We don't know where it went. And then this bill comes and that bill comes and somebody knocks on the door to, to get their money. The, the carburetor of the car went bad and things just start going to pieces. And God has never promised us that we're going to have one, uh, a road of 100% uh, pleasure. He said that we would have tribulation, but he said, also said, I have overcome the world and I will be with you in the midst of that tribulation. And it, but it's also very good to understand this. Our leader, Sister Hicks, in, in the beginning uh, didn't understand this, this principle. And it was one of the greatest re revelations that the Lord gave her back in those years. Uh, she would go to church on Sunday and, and feel the power of God and everything was really rolling and preaching and teaching the, the presence of God all around her. And, and when she woke up on Monday, it was like the, the bottom had fallen out of everything. And Sister Hicks didn't understand what was going on at that time. She was just a very young Christian. And and she said, well, what, what's going on? And the devil came and, and said, look, you, you sinned over here. You've done this wrong. You failed Jesus Christ. And she, because she felt so bad on Monday. But after, after, and we felt the same thing. We have a beautiful blessing on Sunday. And then on Monday, we, whom, everything, the air's knocked out of us. And the devil comes along and said, uh, you've, you've made Jesus sad. He, he, he's mad at you. But then the Lord came and showed her this, that there are mountains and valleys. And she began to learn the, the greatness of this crucified way. And if we understand this, when we're here in, in this place, it's His love, His mercy around us. And we can be sure that when we're up here on this mountaintop that we are going to come down. And when we're down in the nighttime in the valley, when we're in the place of humility, we can be sure that God has not l let us go. And even though we feel like He's far away, He is there. God has promised uh, mountains and valleys. And He will not leave us either on the mountain or in the valley. He, he will be with us in both places. If, if we're growing, the mountains might be higher and the valleys deeper. But we will be sure that we are going to come out of the valley and we will come up to another mountain. And as far as the lesson today is concerned, day has to do with the resurrected Christ. In the, lever, in the, in the book of Revelation, it tells about all the power that he had and his glory and he's, he's reigning, he's uh, governing with his, his father. He's, he's in a glorious place of exaltation. And the book of Revelation explains the, the, the resurrected Christ in, in, in power and glory. But it was after his death and his, re and his resurrection. So the daytime tells us and explains to us of, of exaltation 
the Holy Ghost, the Word of God, exaltation. It talks to us of, of pleasure when the Word of God tells us something of, of daytime. It's the, it's the place of pleasure. Even if, I mean, I'm not talking about sinful pleasures. I'm, I'm talking about the pleasure in God's will. So the daytime is the mountain uh, season, the mountain place. It's when, when everything is, is rolling well with the Lord and, and we're in the, in the daytime. It has to do with learning the Word of God. The, the, the Word is open. The, we're absorbing the Word of God, what we're reading. Everything is, is clicking. And, and the, all we want is to have more and more and more of the Word of God. We're on the mountaintop. We're in exaltation. We're in a, we're in a daytime. And, and, and the Word of God and the Spirit of God are ministering to us. And, and good has to do with prosperity, health, um, everything's doing, everything's going fine. It's the place of light. There, there, there isn't any, anything that's dark, nothing's hidden. We know where we're going. And it's the place where we're going to be hearing the Word of God very clearly. We're going to know His will. And it's a place where the, the sun of righteousness and, and the light is, is shining over us. And it's here that we're going to find the new life in Jesus Christ in this side of, of, of the day. But in the nighttime, that, that's another story. In the nighttime, that's when we're going to be, we're going to start knowing the crucified Christ. We don't know of the crucified Christ in the daytime. We, nor do we know of the resurrected Christ in the nighttime. It's in the nighttime we're going to learn of the one that died for our sins, the one that gave his life, the one that shed his blood so that we could have everything that we have today. The crucified Christ is very important for our spiritual life in this, this life. And it's in the nighttime. The nighttime talks of humility. What is the opposite of humility? What's, what's the opposite of, of humility? Pride. A person humble, a humble person is not a, a proud person. So it's here in the nighttime that God's going to try to put in us the humility that is uh, that, that is the humility of Jesus Christ. Jesus is humble. Jesus is meek. And Jesus has all of these experiences for us here in the nighttime. And this is where we can eat and we can learn of him and we can receive this nature of Jesus Christ within us it's the place of pain there's no there's no pleasure there's pain here in this place uh, operations uh, sicknesses uh, prob sentimental problems problems with the family with the friends it's the valley where we're going to know the the lily of the valleys what's on the mountain the the rose of Sharon but in the valley there's another aspect of Jesus Christ where we find him as the lily of the valleys. And the nighttime and the valley has to do with the crucified Christ, the, the humble one that gave himself to save us. If we never go to the valley, how are we going to grow? How are we going to know this side of him? If we're always in the, on the glory, glory, hallelujah side and never go into trials and, and problems, how can we know the nature of the Lord Jesus Christ and His humility and in His suffering and, and understand what He gave for us? We're not going to love Him unless we really know this crucified Christ. Because it, when we're up on the mountain, uh, we're subconsciously loving His power and, and we love His glory and, uh, our, and we're looking for our... our prince and shining army that's going to come and take us away in his arms of glory to the new Jerusalem. And subconsciously, we're, we're, we're looking for this. But in the, here in the valley, very few people fall in love with the crucified Christ. But the bride is going to fall in love with the crucified lamb. Because in the pain, in the times of the valley, in the night times of her life, these are to push her 
to look for the crucified Christ and to find the one that's waiting there. And to, he's wanting to share with her these experiences with her so that she can fall in love with him. Evil has to do with nighttime. I'm not talking of sin. I'm talking of, of evil means uh, when there's, there's not health, there's not prosperity, there's no money. Uh, and here, in the daytime we hear, but in the nighttime we do. In, in the daytime, for example, God says, give thanks to God in all things, for this is the will of God. But in the, in the valley, <laughs> that's another thing. In the valley, in the pain, are we going to say, glory to God, hallelujah, thank you. Mm -mm. It's not that easy. Unless we go looking for Him and we find His humility and His submission, then He's going to give us the substance that we need so that we can give the thanks in, in the valley in this time of pain. And this is the same for any promise or any principle in God's Word. In the, in the, in the, in the daytime, the sun shines. In the nighttime, the moon shines. And the, there's beautiful lessons in all of this. But, it, but we need to go looking for the crucified Christ. This is the way of God. We can look at it not as a circle, but we can also look at it as, as uh, not as uh, scales, but as a circle. God himself, like a, like, a, like a wheel. God has two sides to himself. And if we're going to look to God, if we're going to love God, we need to love both sides of God. This wheel, this wheel here represents God. And many, many people uh, love the, the day side of, of God. They love the pleasure side. They love the mountaintop experiences and give me more and show me more. And, and they run the conventions, the convention uh, the Indi in Indiana to learn more. And that's good. There's nothing wrong with that. It, it's a place of the sun. And we need to know this side of God. Let's say that God is divided. God himself in his person. One side, one half is day and the other half is night. Like, like this circle that I have here. Just imagine a person that one side's nighttime and another side is daytime. And, uh, for example, you women that are married, if uh, one of your husband was, one side of your husband was green and the other side was purple, on the, on the day of your wedding, on which, with which side are you going to marry? The green or the purple? Huh? You're going to marry both sides. You're going to, to marry all that that man is. So how do we think? that we're going to marry the Lord Jesus Christ if we don't love both sides of Jesus Christ. We, we need to love not only his experiences in the daytime uh, of the resurrected Christ, but we need to love also the crucified Christ. And we need to cry out to God. We need to scream out to God. Teach me. Teach me. Show me in the nighttime how you are. I want to know you. I want to know you as the crucified Christ. I want to understand you. I want to know you in your suffering. I want to know you in your submission. I want to know you, Jesus. And we don't want to know him on the crucified side because that means that I am going to have to have pain. I'm going to be humbled, I'm going to have all of these trials for my life. We don't like the pain. And we don't like the suffering. But understanding today's class, understanding is half of the battle. And after tonight, you'll be able to run more quickly when the, the situations of life come because you're going to say, ah, God has come to show me another side of himself. Hallelujah. He's going to show me another aspect of his personality. And we, 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 we enjoy the service on Sunday, but then we can be sure that on Monday 
there's going to be something else uh, uh, about himself that he wants to show me. He comes as the resurrected Christ. In the nighttime, he comes as the crucified Christ. Is this clear? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The bride is going to love in, in a special, tremendous way the Lord Jesus Christ in his death, in his suffering, in his complete surrender to, to win the salvation for man so that anybody that would come now can find him and fall in love with him. Since we're in the New Testament, let's go to the book of John for one Bible verse. How many of you believe that the rapture is coming quickly? You want to get out of here? You want to get out of here? How many of you want to go in the rapture? <laughs> How many of you want to go? They weren't answering very well in the class. How many of you children want to go? You want to go in the rapture? Mm-hmm. You want to go with Jesus? To the, to the, you want to go to heaven? Some, some don't want to go and some do. How many of you want to go in the rapture? Man, everybody answered then. The rapture was when Jesus comes for his people and, and the people are going to be caught away. And while the Antichrist is doing his thing down here on earth, we're going to be in the presence of God and we'll be in the, in the wedding of the bride and the, the lamb. I want to be up there. I don't want to be down here with the Antichrist and all, all the things that poor earth is going to have to go through during that time. But to go with him, we're going to have to be ready. And we're going to have to do something to, to get ready to get out. So tonight, we can get ready. In this night time of our life, we have to get ready to get out of here. Every day, every day. If, if we're going another way in this lesson, I can show you that we have to be ready. We have to have our, our eyes open. We have to be looking for His coming. It, it, the Word of God says that we need to look up and, and wait for His coming. We need to be prepared. But not, we're not going to be ready for the bride unless we are falling in love with the crucified Christ. Because it's this aspect of Him in our life that's going to prepare us for, for things in this life and for the bride. In John uh, chapter 1, verse 29, it says, The next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him and saith, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. He didn't say, Here's, Here comes the King of kings and the Lord of lords in his great triumph. John said, Uh-uh. Here is the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. What, what happened to the lambs in the Old Testament to take away the sin of, of Israel? They had to be sacrificed. John was saying, look, here comes the crucified Christ. Here comes the one that's going to die for the sins of the world. Let's go to Exodus chapter 12. In this chapter, we find the, the great uh, exodus of Israel. And in studying Israel's journeys, they, Israel had lived 400 years under the, under the hand of Pharaoh and the Egyptians. And, and you, you could, I believe uh, most of you have seen the Ten Commandments. And some of you may have led, read the book of Exodus. And Pharaoh was really coming up hard against Israel because it was growing so big. After 40 years of blessing, they started finding a tremendous darkness and death and, and nighttime in, in the land of Egypt. Great suffering was coming against them from, from Pharaoh. But a lot of the Israelites didn't uh, 
just sit down and give up and oh, God's forgotten about us. Oh, why should I why should I sing? Why should I pray? God doesn't love us anymore. What says the word of God uh, about the, the children of Israel? What did they do in their nighttime? They started crying out to God. They started saying, Father, remember me. Remember your, pro your people. Remember your promises. And the Israelites started crying out to God and they started saying, God, free us from this, in, from this night. Take us out of this night. Take us out of this tremendous suffering and affliction where we are. And if we want to get out of our nighttime, this life, either by the rapture or, if we're, or by way of the death, we need to start crying out to God, Lord, take me out of this nighttime, but take me out with, with a lot of goods. Give me all of the treasures that you want to put in my heart. Hallelujah. So that I can be ready in your presence and be in your bride. And if we want to go in the bride, then we need to be crying out to God, Lord, prepare my heart so that I can get out of here, out of the night right now, in one instant, in an opening and closing of an eye, and twinkling of an eye, I can be in that daytime up there in the clouds with you. So the lesson here in Exodus 12 is useful for us. All scripture is profitable. All scripture is profitable for whom? For, for us. Not for the pastor. Not for the brother or the sister, not for the neighbors, but for me. So this chapter, 12, is where the Israelites were starting to leave Egypt. They were, they were on their way to find liberation for their souls. And they were on their way to becoming the bride of Jesus Christ, the bride of God in, in the land of Canaan. But this night is the beginning of... of of the days it's the beginning of the of the calendar the the Judean calendar this is when they n were born if we could use that word in Exodus uh, 12 verse 1 and it says uh, verse 2 it says this month shall be unto you the beginning of months it is the first month of the year for you he was saying Israel today is going to be the first day of your life when was the beginning of our life In when we came to Jesus Christ when, when we were born literally on the earth that doesn't guarantee a thing we're, we, we were born sinners but when Jesus Christ comes into our hearts and is our savior then that is the beginning of our days so in this night of the Passover the Israelites were preparing themselves to do something very special because it was going to be the day of their birth it's a it's a beginning something different something uh, fabulous was going to happen uh, this night and then it says the beginning of the month it shall be the first month of the year to you and then it says speak ye unto the congregation of Israel saying in the tenth day of this month they shall take to them every man a lamb. A what? A lamb. And who is the lamb? Who is the lamb? Jesus. Jesus is the lamb. And this lamb in the Old Testament was uh, representing the Messiah. They looked by faith uh, through the through the sacrifice towards the Messiah that someday was going to come and free them from their sins. And so every family had to have a lamb. And then it goes on saying that if the family was small, uh, they, they should have others come in to help eat or they should go to another house. And it goes on giving instructions here. And then it says in verse 5, And the lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year, ye shall take it out of the sheep or from the goats. And ye shall keep it up until the fourteenth day of the same month, and the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. And they shall take of the blood 
and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door post of the houses wherein they shall eat it. Blessed be his holy name. In the night time that they were going si to leave, God gave them a commandment. They had to enter into their houses, all of the families, uh, the children, the uncles, aunts, grandpa and grandma, everybody had to come into this house. And on this house, what did they have to put? They had to put the blood, where? On the, on the, on the upper door post and on the two side posts. Because this blood was going to be a sign, very, a very clear sign that the death not, would not enter in to touch them. In, an, in another class that we had, I was telling them, how were they going to, uh, how, how are you going to keep your children from the death that's around all of them? By, by the blood. You, you children, how are you going to keep yourselves from the death in, in, in the world that's around us today? How? By asking Jesus Christ to come into our heart, right? What does Jesus put in, his, in our heart when he comes? He comes with his blood. So what is going to protect us from all of these, these darts of the enemy? The blood of Jesus Christ. What blood? The blood of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. The blood of the Lamb. The blood of the crucified Christ. Blessed be his holy name. The blood of the crucified one needs to be over the doors of our house. And it's here where we're going to be safe from the death. In verse 8 it says, And they shall eat, and they shall eat the flesh in that night, in the night time, not in the time of exaltation, but in the night in the night in the time of pr trials in the time of tribulation in the m moments of uh, stomach aches in, in the, at the hours when, you, when you've, you've just uh, sprained your ankle when you're, when you're with your friends at school in the night time that is when we should run to look for the blood because it's in that moment the enemy's going to come with his, his arrows to try to stop our faith and, and try to take away our belief in Jesus Christ. He's going to try to steal from us the peace and the joy. But if we have the covering of the blood of Jesus Christ, those, those arrows and those darts are not, uh, uh, are not going to be able to penetrate through this blood and to come into my heart. Hallelujah because his blood is powerful. The blood of the crucified Christ is powerful. The, the, the blood of the, of the humble one, the blood of the, of the one that, that went all the way to the bottom for us to make himself a, a, a womb for us. If we hide ourselves in that blood and we get ourselves, uh, make ourselves even lower than what he was, then we can be covered with that blood. We can't enter through and say, ah, Lord of Lords and King of Kings, come and cover me with your blood. <laughs> it doesn't work that way. One comes in and said, Lord, Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner. Cover me with your blood. Because you died. You died for me. You gave your blood to cover me. Cover me. Cover me with this precious blood. And it's in the night time then, the trials, the troubles, the tribulations, when we have a tremendous privilege of finding a new portion of his blood for our life. If we were never in the night time, if we were never, uh, if the enemy never came against us, if we were never tested, we would never know a new portion of his blood. This was one literal night for Israelites, but every year they had to celebrate this night of the Passover until the 
the past the last Passover when Jesus Christ ate it with his disciples and he said take this is my blood of the new pact he gave uh, a blood that's omniscient omnipotent and omnipresent to cover uh, our hearts he gave it in the cross so that he could give us this blood so it's he, he's given us this privilege no, nobody else no other human being can have the privilege of this blood only the ones that hide themselves in the nighttime covered by the humility by the submission by the crucifixion of the Lord Jesus Christ in that moment he puts a tremendous uh, protection around us so that the enemy cannot steal the things in our heart or steal our heart and as we have more and more classes you're going to see how the Antichrist spirits are coming tremendously in these days the spirits of Antichrist come to, to rob the faith and the truth in the hearts of, of God's people God, <laughs> the devil already has the, the, the sinners in his hand sin, uh, fornication, adultery, drunkenness, all that he's not worried about those but he comes tremendously against the Christians trying to steal us he comes against the, the young people he comes against the children, he comes against the adults how are we going to be safe? hiding us hiding ourselves in the in this night time of our life under the hiding ourselves under the blood of the crucified lamb the the blood of the the one that was humbled and crucified and submissive for love of me and for the father